doesn't have any text. There's no manuscripts. They don't exist anywhere. And if they don't exist, you're not required to believe it. Now, here's where I'm going with this, okay? Because the premise is, and I'm getting this based upon what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing from people, what they're, what they're putting on their blogs, what they're putting on their Facebook pages, is that if, if you are not saying God's name as Yahweh or Yahweh, see, there's differences, they all don't get along as to how it can be said. Or it's Yahshua or Yeshua or Yahashua. If you're not saying those names, however we told you to say them, you're not saved. You're not praying right. You're not getting God's response. You have to invoke the sacred name in, so in, in your prayers. And the Bible that you read must invoke the sacred name. They think that the now here's where it gets me, okay? And I'm going to make this real simple for everybody. What they did was they took a King James Bible, and a guy tried to present me with this in Michigan, which I found out this is where a lot of these people are located in Lansing, Michigan. The guy came up to me with this, and he said, "Have you seen this Bible?" And I said, "Well, is it a King James?" He said, "It's based on the King James, okay?" And I, I wouldn't even touch it. But what it was was they had taken every use of the word Lord, both Old Testament and New Testament, out. And they replaced it with Yahweh. Okay? Then God was Elohim and Jesus was Yahshua. They did that all throughout the Bible. In other words, they altered the scriptures. Upon what basis? Upon no basis whatsoever. They altered the Bible. Basically what they said was, and what they tried to do with me in that meeting and I'll never forget it as long as I live. They tried to get me to admit that there were mistakes in the King James Bible. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this today. I'm going to say it tomorrow. I'm going to say it 10 years from now. And I'm going to say it my last breath, that the King James Bible is 100% right in everything that it says. 100% including including Jesus, including Lord, including Jehovah. It is right in everything that it says. I'm going to give you some scripture. Okay? Uh, remember our discourse on tongues. Okay? Our discourse on tongues was, it started out, Isaiah 28, 11, God, sa God himself said, there's an authority for you right there. If you're looking for authority, here it is. Here's what God said. Now, some other guy might have said, oh, no, it's got to be Hebrew. It's got to be an original Hebrew. But God said in Isaiah 28, 11, with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? God told Israel right then. I'm gonna, there's going to be a point. I'm not going to talk in Hebrew anymore. I'm going to speak with another tongue. So what happened? On the day of Pentecost, what were they doing? In fact, if you look at the list in Acts chapter 2, the 17 languages, I, I'm, just, I'm just taking a wild guess here. I don't remember the Hebrew language being mentioned as one of the tongues that they were speaking in Acts chapter 2, I don't, I don't, I'm just kind of looking here. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see Hebrew being spoken. I see a list of 17 other languages given here. I don't see Hebrew as one of them. And what were they doing? They were giving utterance by the Holy Ghost. The Holy God himself was speaking through them in nine Hebrew languages. And you and I both know that every language in the world has a form of the word Jesus. In Latin, it's Yesu. In Greek, it's, it's Jesus. In Spanish, it's Jesus. In English, it's Jesus. In Japanese, it's Gisu. Okay? Um, I can't remember what it was in Swahili. But every tongue in the world has a form of the name Jesus. Do you know why? God gave them his name in their language. That's what he said he was going to do. And then in 1 Corinthians 14, the apostle Paul basically says that interpretation is a gift of the Spirit. Who am I 
Who am I and who are the sacred name people to say that God doesn't interpret the, the sacred name? God will not interpret the sacred name Yahweh into other languages. Who am I to say that when the Holy Ghost said that that's what he does? He interprets unknown languages into one so that people can understand, so that people can be edified. That's what the Holy Ghost does. And the proof of it is in the King James Bible and other vernacular translations that have followed the same textual lines as the King James. People have the Word of God in their language, including the name that they can call upon. John chapter 19, listen to this. John 19, verse 19, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. What language did he write these in? Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. That's what he wrote them in. Okay? Listen to this. Because, the, remember, the principle is, God can only be understood as a Hebrew God. You can only understand Hebrew. You need to learn Hebrew. And you need to be a Hebrew. And that contradicts the theme of the New Testament. Paul said in Romans 1.16, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. By the way, they, they can't even handle the name Christ. They cannot handle that name. Because Christ is a pagan tongue word. It's not, it was Mashiach. Okay? Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's what he said. Paul said, Romans 10, 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him, whether it's Greek or Hebrew. Galatians 3.27, For as many as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He said that in Greek, translated into English. Colossians 3.10, And we have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. That's what the Bible says. Okay? Listen to this. Isaiah chapter... Oh, I like this one. I like this one. Okay? You're going to like this one. Isaiah 60, verse 15. Write this down. Study it later. Isaiah 60, verse 15. Where hast thou hast been forsaken and hated? He's talking about Israel. So that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. You're going to like this. You know what God told Israel? Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles. You shall suck the milk of the Gentiles. You know what milk is? What's the word? God told Israel that it, when, when they found him, they would be sucking through a, through a Gentile bottle. Okay? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now, how, what, is, what is the proper pronunciation of yod Hey va Hey, what is the proper pronunciation of that? Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to use the only authority that exists in my life. The only authority that exists in my life. Okay, if someone else comes along and wants to contradict what my Bible says, I believe my Bible and not them. You should have that mindset. I, listen, I want to set you free. I want to set you free from the people who would lord over you and dominate over you and tell you that you're not saved until you follow their doctrine. I want to set you free from that. I want to set you free from the people who are trying to get you to practice wizardry and, and witchcraft and magic. What are you talking about? Sacred nameism. Sacred nameism as it exists, the concept that unless you invoke the sacred name, you cannot reach God, that is witchcraft. That is a spell. It's spell casting is what it is. And I won't apologize for that. If that makes you mad, you're going to have to be mad at me. My authority is this Bible. 
okay? And if you choose not to follow me, then I'm going to encourage you to follow the Bible. But this Bible tells you what his name is in English. Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. By the way, you remember the, the, the deal where, um, who was it, uh, Juanita Bynum was praying to the, God, the many-breasted one? And that was in the Hebrew, it was El Shaddai. And some scholars think the Hebrew might have alluded to the idea that maybe the root of El Shaddai was breast. It's not the same. God said, my, my authority, my only authority in my life told me that it wasn't the many-breasted God. It was God Almighty. By the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah, was I not known to them. I have, I have no permission. I have no education. I have no license. I have no permission. I have no anointing to change. Let me get it up here. here. I have no permission to change. It's hard to do this here. What that says. I have no permission to do that. You don't either, by the way. You think you do, or you think somebody else does, but you don't have that permission. That's a private interpretation. Is what it, a private translation. Psalm 83, 18, that men may know that thou, whose name alone, think about it, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Who's the most high? Isaiah 12, 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Isaiah 26, 4, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Now, uh, take your Bibles. Everybody get your Bible out. Get your can of King James out, okay? Um, and it's 2 o'clock, I need to hurry. Okay? Um, turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, very quickly. Matthew 4, 7, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you your, your authority. Yes, Pastor Mike. Well, get, get busy with it. Matthew chapter 4. And I am, as I'm becoming more and more prone to do, I'm going to shut my timer music off so it doesn't interfere. Okay? Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. And then I want you to hold your place. I'm going to put your finger right there. And I want you to hold your place and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 6. You got your finger in Matthew and look in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay? By the way, did you know that Every time Jesus responded to the devil uh, when he was being tempted in the wilderness, that all three times he was quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. I think that's interesting. But anyway, Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want you to look at verse 16. Okay? Verse 16 of Deuteronomy 6, uh, the King James Bible says, Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massah. I want you to notice that in your King James, the word Lord is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You know what that means. Okay, that was the King James translator's way of telling you that the underlying Hebrew word was yod he va he. They're tell that's their way of telling you that. Now, the sacred name people, and I've seen a lot of other people do this, they say, those stupid King James translators, they didn't know what they were doing. They should have translated it the way it really is. It's what they should have done. Can I suggest to you that they were just simply following orders? From King James, the Mason, the homosexual? No. The King James translators were following orders from the Holy Ghost. <gasps> How can you say that? I'm going to show you. Matthew, chapter 4. You hold your place there. I want you to notice that in your King James, Deuteronomy 6.16, you should not tempt the Lord. yod heh vah -he. Matthew, chapter 4, verse 7. 